hut cry. Right this center. Hut, hut.
I'd like to ask that Father Charles Blizzard please come forward to give the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, creator and father of us all, we turn our hearts and minds to you, asking that you be with us in this very special hour. Come quietly, yet powerfully, and speak into our hearts the words that we need. In this time of joy and happiness over past achievement, we lift up our humble thanks to you, O Lord, for you alone are the source of all our talents and the wellspring of our gladness. Where there is doubt and uncertainty about what lies ahead, let your power and your purpose be known to us so that our wills may be in alignment with your will. O God, take all the memories of the past and all our hopes dreams, doubts, and uncertainties about the future, and consecrate them to the fulfilling of your will. Take all that we are and all that we may yet become and use it to the furthering of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Thank you, Father Blizzard. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome you to the Cassidy School's 68th commencement. We are here on this day to honor and to celebrate the distinguished class of 2018. But first, let's give a few faculty awards. The Mike Monroney Fellowship Award. In 1946, Congressman Mike Monroney, later U.S. Senator from Oklahoma, was awarded a $10,000 prize from Collier's Magazine for his plan to reorganize Congress. Congressman Monroney gave the money to Bishop Cassidy for youth work. Bishop Cassidy accepted the $10,000, and on what is now the front 40 acres of this campus, he and a group of Episcopal laymen founded Cassidy School in 1947. The school continues this award, and each spring, the faculty nominate recipients for this fellowship. The A.S. Mike Monroney Fellowship is for character, competence, and outstanding teaching ability in the classroom. It is a genuine pleasure to present the 2018 Mike Monroney Fellowships to Kevin Hermanson and Shannon Semmet. <clears throat> Mr. Kerry Julian, please come forward and present the Geneva Hood Award. The Geneva Hood Award was established in 1976 by Bill and Sue Hood in appreciation of the fine education their four children received at Cassidy School. The award was named in memory and to honor Bill's mother, Geneva Hood, who was a longtime teacher and tutor at Nichols Hills Elementary School. The Geneva Hood Award, in the form of a cash stipend, recognizes and honors an outstanding teacher. The award is particularly special as the recipient each year is chosen by his or her peers, the faculty of Cassidy School. It is a pleasure to present the 2018 Geneva Hood Award to Mindy Scoville. Thank you, Kerry. The John R. Horder Memorial Award. The late John R. Horder served Cassie School as business manager from 1973 to 1987. In his memory, funds were donated to the school 
and designated to honor faculty or staff. The John R. Horder Memorial Award is presented to that member of Cassidy School faculty or staff who is recognized by their colleagues for outstanding character, service to the school, and love of fellow man. It is a genuine pleasure to present the 2018 John R. Horder Memorial Award to Ms. Carmen Clay. Several years ago, in appreciation of Cassidy School faculty, Mr. Stanton L. Young, a past trustee and father of three graduates, established the Barbara and Stanton L. Young Foundation Award. This award is presented to a Cassidy teacher who has demonstrated uncommon commitment, dedication, and competence. The recipient holds this honor for three years and each year receives a generous honorarium from the grant established by Mr. Young. It is a pleasure to present the 2018 Barbara and Stanton L. Young Foundation Award to Mr. Clint McCune. The Sandra Billups Cerny Award, honoring longtime primary division teacher Sandra Billups Cerny, is presented to that member of the Cassidy School faculty, staff, or administration who is recognized by their colleagues for dedication to the school and excellence in meeting his or her responsibilities. The recipient receives a one-time generous honorarium. It is a genuine pleasure to present this year's 2018 Sandra Billups Cerny Award to Mr. Mark Coat. The trustees' awards to faculty and staff will be recognized by the president of the board, Mrs. Vicki English. For many years, it's been a tradition for the trustees to recognize and to honor the faculty and staff for years of service to the school at the annual faculty luncheon given by the head of school. We ask the audience to hold their applause until all years of service have been read. I will read the names. For five years of devoted service to the school, Sonia Cornelius, Jamie Hale, Peter A. Hoffman, Richard Job, Mallory Statz, Marion Tolan, Emily Wardrop. For 10 years of service, Karen Dillier, Jay Galligley, Victoria Humphrey. For 15 years of service, Matt Pena, Kobe Scoville, Nathan Sheldon. For 20 years of service, David Braden, Sherry Lamb, Larry Moore. It's a privilege to recognize faculty who have served Cassidy School faithfully for 25 years. Would Joanne Infantino please come forward? We also have a faculty member that has served Cassidy School faithfully for 30 years. Would Steve Shelley please come forward?
I would also like to acknowledge those individuals that will be retiring this year. As I read your name, will you please stand? Audience, please hold your applause until after the names have been read. From the primary division, Jamie Howell. Lower division director, Anne France. Middle division science and computer te teacher, Glenn Emerson. Middle division director, Elizabeth Larson. Director of Service Learning, Carmen Clay. Director of Psychological Services, Dr. Marcia Moore. And Dr. Director of Institutional Advancement, Steve Shelley. We want to thank you all for your years of service and want you to know that you will be missed by your colleagues and certainly by your students. This year's class oration will be given by Mr. William Basor Bennett. Uh, so before I start, I'd just like to thank all my classmates for electing me to be a uh, speaker. It really means a lot to represent you guys. Um, all right, let's get started. The ancient Greek philosopher, Socrates, possessed one of the strongest and most interesting minds of his time. Even today, his philosophies are intriguing, and many of the questions he posed to mankind remain unanswered. Students would pay top dollar, or euro, or whatever they used back then, to attend his prestigious school in order to learn about the mysteries of the universe, his perspectives on humanity, and how to question what knowledge we've already been giving. However, Socrates' students may have been surprised at his most pivotal lesson, Nothe Sutin. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, roughly translated, it means know yourself. Know yourself? It's, it's interesting to me that a teacher who knows and questions so, so many things on such a grand scale as the universe and humanity as a whole will instead beg his students to focus on something as seemingly small and insignificant as themselves. Among other philosophies, Socrates believed that people can't truly learn anything until they've learned who they are. William Shakespeare provided similar instruction in the play Hamlet. The character Polonius gives his son Laertes important words before he departs for Paris. He told his son, this above all else, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night and day, thou canst not then be false to any man. Many of you have probably found Shakespeare boring, myself included. I mean, it's nearly impossible to understand what he's saying unless you break out a magnifying glass and study what he wrote for hours. Well, I believe he was advocating for basically the same thing as Socrates was, about knowing yourself. Love him or hate him, you have to admit that there is a reason Shakespeare has been taught in schools for hundreds of years after his work was published. It's because, though the settings and circumstances in his plays may be different from modern day, the concepts revealed by his works are just as applicable now as they were 500 years ago. The importance of knowing who you are and remaining true to yourself still holds true today, and Cassidy has provided a welcoming environment for the class of 2018 to discover themselves. The concept of self-discovery is really important to me specifically, because up until senior year, I didn't have a good grasp on who I was and who I wanted to be. I thought I did, because I had an answer to the question, who are you, which was something along the lines of, I like to party, I like to spend time with friends, I like playing sports, and I experience mild depression from chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> However, I still felt like my understanding of myself was too surface level, and I wanted to know more about who I was and why, but I really had no idea how a person would even go about a quest to find himself. I thought that a journey of self-discovery probably had to involve something like hiking deep into the Andes mountains and meditating with monks for a year at a time until you've lost all of your hair and reached enlightenment but I didn't really have time for that. I needed a different way. There was always things I wanted to do that either nerves or lack of time had prevented me from doing that I figured might give me more insight into who I am. With senior year coming up, I thought, screw it, I'm just going to do everything I've been wanting to do in hopes that I would find my passion through one of these activities. When I really started looking into new things I wanted to be a part of, it soon became clear how many opportunities Cassidy provides that allow students to grow into themselves and really find out who they are. 
If science, technology, engineering, and math are interests you'd like to pursue, Cassidy provides the opportunity to be involved in Science Olympiad. And the, and the individuals who have chosen to get involved have been state champions and have continued on to represent the state of Oklahoma at the national competitions for the past six years. Building hovercrafts, constructing bridges, designing towers, and crying when your project inevitably stops working seconds before the competition are just a few things you can expect. Students in this program have been able to compete against the brightest minds of our generation and have succeeded with flying colors. If the arts are more your thing, Cassidy has several outlets to discover and express yourself, from visual to performing arts. The theater puts on two productions every year, a play and a musical, and anyone can be a part of these productions and work theater into their schedule. Art classes like painting, drawing, and pottery help students find their passion for creativity. The orchestra allows kids to express themselves through music and hone their abilities to create something beautiful, whether together as an orchestra or individually as a solo performer. Sports may be someone else's calling, and Cassie lets you play whatever sports you want, both on and off campus, to feed your passion. Cassie has bred conference champions and team players, with a few of our class even going on to the next level. If you want to get engaged with your community in order to learn from and help others, Youth Active in the Community, otherwise known as YAC, allows students to get outside of Cassidy's campus and connect with the Oklahoma City community as they engage with, learn from, and serve others. Such engagement creates lasting and positive impressions for everyone involved. Students who want to be involved in politics can join youth in government to get a taste of how our political structure works and how they can make an impact in it. The debate team feeds constructive argument and critical thinking, allowing for important and rational discussions to be had. If none of these particularly interest you, that's fine. It's perfectly okay to focus solely on your school studies to be more knowledgeable in, subjects, in subjects that you'd like to pursue. And many of my fellow graduates have found great success in this. There's a little something for everyone at Cassidy to find his or her place. And the great thing is that these activities aren't mutually exclusive. So you can be in multiple clubs, play sports, and create art all at the same time, leaving just enough time at the end of the day to not do homework. Cassidy also actively encouraged students to participate in these activities by carving out time during each day for the arts, sports, and clubs. Personally, my senior year, I was able to play four sports, be in both the musical and the play, and perform in the orchestra. Each of these activities gave me new insight into who I am and helped develop me into someone that I've been proud of. By offering several ways in which students can find and breed their passions, Cassidy, with his incredible, with his incredible and supportive faculty, has helped the brilliant minds of the class of 2018 in their journey to discover who they are, and in doing so, made them able to contribute to the world in new and exciting ways. So who are we? We are diligent musicians. We are tenacious athletes. We are crafty writers, clever engineers, and caring citizens. But most importantly, I was gonna say we're sweating to death, but it's actually really nice outside, so. <laughs> At the expense of the joke, I'll take the nicer weather. We found our blossom, and hopefully we intend to stay that way. So, to the class of 2018, never forget who you found yourself to be. Take what you've found to love and do something beautiful with it. Never sell yourself short. Always go 100% with what you love, and someday you'll find that you've helped yourself and others along the way. I can't wait to see how it changed the world in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bennett, and thank you for the weather. The following awards were presented earlier this month at the Girls and Boys Banquets and the Awards Assembly. We would like to take this time to recognize each award winner. When you hear your name, would you please stand and be acknowledged? A description of each award is in your program. The Vanderbilt University Award was presented to Carlos Paul Henry and Mason Cruz Uland. The Princeton Club of Oklahoma City Award was presented to Dylan Nilesh Vasan. The Yale Club Award was presented to Dillard Darian Bowie.
The Richard A. Marble Award was presented to Kate Ellen Richardson. The Margaret Tuck Award was, pre was presented to Reese Olivia Rhodes. <laughs> the Francis Nagel Award was presented to Sahanya Bakhtaran. <laughs> Several years ago, the Samuel Roberts Noble Foundation gave a very generous grant to the school's endowment fund. The income earned each year is divided equally among the recipients and is in the form of a tuition grant awarded to the school or college where the recipients will be enrolled next fall. The Samuel Roberts Noble Scholars are the boy and girl in each class who have the highest numerical average for this academic year. At this point, we would like to recognize the 2018 Noble Scholar winners. Would you please stand when you hear your name announced? The top boy in the ninth grade is Matthew Diego Fernandez McQuistian. who was unable to be here. The top girl in the ninth grade is Kate Ellen Richardson. The top boy in the 10th grade is Dylan Nilesh Vassan. The top girl in the 10th grade class is Nikki Takahashi Weitzenhofer, who was also unable to attend. The top boy in the 11th grade is Daniel Lucas Schnabel. The top girl in the 11th grade is Catherine Elise Kazow. The top boy in the 12th grade is Aiden Goya Riker. And the top girl in the 12th grade is Angela Nicole Jarjura. <laughs> Letters of congratulations and medals will be mailed to Noble Scholars and their parents next week. The Phi Beta Kappa Award and the Summa Cum Laude Award. The Phi Beta Kappa Award is presented each year to that boy or girl in the senior class who has demonstrated superior scholarship over the last four years. This year, the Phi Beta Kappa Award is presented to Angela Nicole Jarjura. The Summa Cum Laude Award was established by the late Right Reverend Thomas Cassidy and is awarded each year to that member of the senior class who has maintained the highest scholastic average throughout his or her high school years. This year, the Summa Cum Laude Award is presented to Aiden Goya Riker. The Reverend Canon James R. Harris Award. In memory of the Reverend Canon James R. Harris, former comptroller of the Episcopal Diocese of Oklahoma and longtime friend of Cassidy School, this award is presented to an upper school student who has made significant contributions to the Cassidy community, drawing from a spiritual commitment and expressed re by repeated acts of thoughtfulness and service. The recipient has enriched our corporate life. It is my pleasure to present the 2018 James R. Harris Award to Miriam Fathima Shakir and Safra Fathima Shakir.
the Ian Rennert Memorial Award in memory of Ian Rennert, class of 1987, is awarded to a senior who displays a fullness of vision which unifies and elevates their endeavors, whether they be academic, artistic, or athletic, beyond the scope of ordinary achievement. The 2018 Ian Rennert Memorial Award is awarded to William Basor Bennett. The Headmaster's Award is given in honor of Stephen Gassaway, Michael Martin, Sean Kelly, Howard Tabor, Robert B. Woolsey, Richard B. McCubbin, Barnaby J. Roberts, Mark H. Mullen, Charles W. Britton, Interim Headmaster David W. Gorham, and Christopher C. Bright, whose leadership has built this great school. The award is given to a senior who has made a special contribution to the life and to the spirit of the school. The 2018 Headmaster's Award goes to Jackson Payne Davis. Would Mrs. English please come forward to present the Trustees Award. The Trustees Award, a permanent trophy of the school, is established in honor of past and present trustees in gratitude for their devoted service to Cassidy School. This award is given to that student who by virtue of his or her character, loyalty and service has made Cassidy a finer school. It is a pleasure to present the 2018 Trustees Award to Tara Ramakrishnan. The Cassidy Award, named in honor of the late Right Reverend Thomas Cassidy, is a permanent trophy of the school on which are inscribed the names of the winners from year to year. This is the highest award of the school and is given to that student who in character, scholarship, leadership, and devotion has made the most outstanding contribution to the life of the school. The 2018 Cassidy Award is presented to Luke Douglas Albert. <laughs> Burns Hargis is the 18th president of Oklahoma State University, and he is just the second graduate to serve in that role. And while it seems like they just moved up to Stillwater, 
He and First Cowgirl, Ann, and th this past year celebrated their 10th year leading the Cowboys, and we are sure glad to have them leading the Cowboys. Before being named OSU president, Mr. Hargis had a long and distinguished legal and business career. He has led many civic and philanthropic projects across this great city and state, and in 2009, he received the state's highest honor when he was in inducted into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. President Hargis holds degrees in accounting from Oklahoma State University and in law from the University of Oklahoma. He and his lovely wife, Ann, have two married children and three grandchildren. During President Hargis's tenure at OSU, there has been unprecedented momentum and record growth in so many areas. Today, OSU is experiencing record enrollment by the fact that this coming fall, there will be in excess of 4,000 students enrolled record fundraising by the virtue that he has raised in excess of $1.7 billion, record construction, transforming the OSU campus to be more competitive in both academics and in athletics. Through his leadership, Oklahoma State is as committed, committed as ever to its land grant mission of serving Oklahoma and the world through education, research, and extension. Please help me welcome President Burns Hargis. Thank you, Nathan. I really wish Will would come up here and give that speech again. That, uh, that, that, this is uh, a long way for a, when Nathan called. I couldn't believe you were asking a John Marshall graduate to come to Cassidy. I mean, while you all were over here studying Socrates and Shakespeare, we were fighting for our lunch money. So, it's, <laughs> so this, is, this is quite an honor for me to, to be here. And, I must say, as Will observed, the, uh, the weather has really improved a lot because I, I had several hot jokes here, but uh, we're not going to uh, take our time. Uh, really, I've, this is probably my 12th commencement to be through this year, and so I've heard a lot of commencement speakers, and I can tell you that the best ones are short. A good commencement speech should have a beginning and an end, and they ought to be as close together as, me, <laughs> as possible. I, uh, there, I read the story of a commencement speaker at Yale University who pontificated on and on and on about Y is for yearning and A is for attitude and L is for leadership and so on. Afterwards, he went down and he saw a student and he said, son, I, I noticed you seem to be moved by my speech. What, what part of it moved you? And he said, no, I was just thanking God I wasn't graduated from Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So you're really kind of like a corpse at a funeral. You kind of have to be there, but nobody wants you to say too much. <laughs> Students, uh, graduates, you cannot imagine the relief, the pride, and the joy that your parents feel tonight. And if you're going in state, uh, they're gonna get a big raise when this is over. So it'd be a good time to ask for money. But you're, uh, you're leaving still another cycle. You know, we go through, we go through kindergarten, then we go through elementary school, then we go through, through middle school, then we go through now high school. And so you're seniors and you're confident and you're, you're assured and you know your place in this community. Now you go back to being a wide-eyed freshman again next fall. And uh, this is my 10th year, as, as Nathan said, and so, and, and I gotta tell you, if you ever get a chance to be a university president, being around 25,000 20 year olds is really fun. There's a lot of energy that goes on on that campus. I love it. But uh, I've observed thousands of students, and I've uh, made note of the, the students that really seem to get the most out of college and have uh, the best experience and then go on to have great success either in academe uh, or in industry. Uh, and so I, uh, I thought I would uh, just share some of the things I've observed. This is, this is the sage advice part of the speech, uh, but it'll be short and uh, hopefully painless. You need to have a plan. Uh, you can't just go and just start taking courses and kind of hope it leads somewhere. You know, as somebody said, a, a fool with a plan can beat a genius without a plan anytime. So have a plan. Now, th that great philosopher Mike Tyson said, I always step in the ring with a plan until I get hit. Go to class. Always go to class. I think that'd get an amen out of this crowd. Uh, the, uh, and sit on the front row if you can, and ask questions, and look interested. I mean, faculty are people, believe it or not. They actually are people, and they do have feelings, and they want you to think you're, you're, they're interesting, whether they are or not. 
act that way. Take a few courses that, uh, that just because they interest you. You never know where it might lead. Who knows, you might find your passion. You know, Steve Jobs actually took calligraphy at Stanford, which is what led him to the Apple style uh, once he met Steve Wozniak, who actually knew something about computers. Get in the habit of being happy. People like to be around happy people. You know, things happen to everybody, uh, and you can't control that, but you can control how you react to it. Uh, my dad always said, don't tell other people your troubles. Half the people don't care, and the other half are kind of glad you're having them. So <laughs> his other one was, uh, don't, don't think too much about what other people are thinking about you, because the truth is they don't think too much about you. <laughs> They're thinking about what other people are thinking about them. So put that on your refrigerator. Get in the habit of sports and exercise. I promise you at your 10th year reunion, you'll know who did it and who didn't. <laughs> and it will become more apparent as the, reun the reunions go on. Be persistent. Uh, you're you're going to have to overcome things your entire career. Uh, n things never go as planned, as Mike Tyson observed. Uh, but as Churchill said, success is never final and failure is never fatal. And just, I, you know, I ran for governor and got beat bad, not just beaten. I was destroyed, in effect. And, and, uh, and I survived. I, my campaign for governor was so bad that uh, one writer said that I, my, my campaign put the go word Google in gubernatorial. So I overcame it. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. Dr. Seuss tried to publish Green Eggs and Ham 23 times before he got it published. Elvis flunked music. Garth Brooks almost went broke before he, uh, Friends in Low Places came out and saved him. So try to be persistent, stay after it. Don't post stupid things on social media. <laughs> Especially things that your, uh, your parents, your admission officers at universities or your future employers might see. You can write an angry post, just don't post it. You'll be much happier. Oh, and don't send mean tweets to your president wherever you go to school, <laughs> just generally, but especially when they predict snow, a lot of snow, because I start getting the tweets, at Burns Hargis, man up, close school. <laughs> or at Burns Hargis, don't put my child at risk. Of course, it's the child that wrote that. It was, it was not the parents. And seriously, as, as Will ob observed in his uh, remarks, get involved on campus. Being involved in organizations and working together and meeting people and, and making things better is the best leadership training there is. You can't learn leadership in a book. You can't even learn it listening to somebody talk about it. You have to do it. You have to get out front and take a chance at failing. And believe me, you will from time to time. Thomas Edison always said that he, he tried, I think, 14,000 ways to make a light bulb, all of which failed. But he said, oh, no, they didn't fail. I just learned another way it wouldn't work. So stay, stay after it and be involved. And become inspired about something bigger than yourself. And on a personal note, I'll, just, I'll tell you my experience. I was in, in college in the 60s, and it was a tumultuous period. Uh, the civil rights movement was in full force. Vietnam was going on. Uh, but I really became inspired uh, by the civil rights movement. I grew up in the South, and I really saw how things were in the South. And I was so moved by the courage and the commitment of the people in the civil rights movement. I marveled at Martin Luther King's leadership through that period. The march in Selma across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, the bus boycott in Montgomery, the Martin Luther King's letter from the Birmingham jail, the march on Washington. It was very inspiring. I remember Martin Luther King talking about a woman, a former slave named Harriet Tudman. She escaped from bondage in Maryland in the 1850s and got involved in the Underground Railroad that freed slaves and brought them north. She actually claimed to be the conductor of the Underground Railroad, and she said she never lost a passenger. 
Martin Luther King quoted Harriet Tudman to inspire his followers one day that I saw and was very inspired by. He said that she was charging the escaping slaves as they made their way along the Underground Railroad. She said, if you hear the dogs barking, keep going. If you see the torches in the woods, keep going. If they're shouting after you, keep going. Don't ever stop, keep going. If you want a taste of freedom, keep going. I think that's the essence of life for us all. Don't let adversity ever stop you. So to the class of 2018 from Cassidy School, keep going. Thank you. Thank you, Burns. Now I would like to ask that Ms. Joanne Infantino and Mr. Chris Halpern, senior class sponsors, to read the names of members of the class of 2018. We ask the audience that you hold your applause until after all the diplomas have been granted. Catherine Brooke Abernathy. Luke Douglas Albert. Samuel Reed Atkinson. William Basor Bennett. Nia Chanel Blackwell. Sarah Nicole Bozales. Chloe B. Brown. Quinn Bonag. Mark Evans Cameron. Donald Jackson Childress. Zachary Aaron Connor. Sarah Catherine Crane.
Ryan Matthew Cudd. Reagan Elizabeth Dahlgren. <laughs> Jackson Payne Davis. Robert Blair Davis. Anthony Joseph Davoli. Hannah Nicole Elkins. Evie Marie Focus. Jeremiah Alexander Edward Frost. Christopher Brian Geiger. Christopher Ian Goodall. Nika Marie Gorski. Azan Nasser Hafiz. Thelma Grace Hall. Catherine Faith Henry. Isabella Louise Jean Hoppenjans. Noah Thomas Elliot Hoppenjans. Jan. 
Adam Van Hughes. Natalie Elizabeth Hugos. Angela Nicole Jarjura. Margaret Nell Johnson. Hannah Elizabeth Jordan. Cameron Elizabeth Jordanoff. Alexander Naji Karam. Saad Ayub Khan. <laughs> Caleb K. Killebrew. Jillian Park Kim. Caroline Annalise Elaine Kaiser. Orion Isabella Kuttner. Dallas Pace Lee, Jr. <laughs> G 
Gabrielle Rose Lee. Cameron Giovanni Lindley. <laughs> Bakel Zhang Lu. Ryan Samuel McNeil. Carlotta Jacqueline Maria Melton. Caroline Noel Mock. <laughs> Margaret Rose Nafee. David Colton Nelson. Joseph Ethan Nelson. Sharon Ann Phillip. <laughs> Ava Gail Prentice. Aiden Goya Riker.
Tara Ramakrishnan. Sanjay Stephen Ramdas. John Irvin Renfro the third. Mary Catherine Reynolds. Caleb Solomon Richards. <laughs> Chloe Alyssa Richards. Abigail Grace Robinson. Brady Anderson Rotes. Justin Carl Schneider. Mariam Fatima Shakir. Safra Fatima Shakir.
Caroline Merson Silver. Jack Julian Story. Savannah Marie Taylor. <laughs> Michael Chung Ting. Lauren Elizabeth Euland. <laughs> Olivia Grace Oots. Melissa Marie Van Sant. Maunus Stjernagar V. Jack Albert Warren. Garrett Alexander Weeks. Jackson David Wilkes. Chandler Patrick Williams. Mm -hmm. 
Mallory Louise Woodruff. I now present the class of 2018. like to invite the class of 2018 and their families and friends to a reception on the lawn in front of the Woolsey House. After our benediction, we will close the ceremony with our recessional. We would ask that you allow the recessional process to process past your row before you begin to exit towards the chapel lawn for the ceremonial tossing of the cap. Father Blizzard, I want to thank you for faithfully serving our school for the past 12 years. Know that you will be in our hearts and prayers as you begin your new ministry serving the needs of the women and men of our armed forces. Will you please come and pronounce your final benediction as we graduate the 68th class of Cassidy School in this, the 71st year of our school. Let us pray. My brothers and sisters, finally whatever things are true, and whatsoever things are honorable, and whatsoever things are just and pure, whatsoever things are lovely and good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, the things which you have both learned and received and heard and saw in this place. Do these things. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you this day and remain with you now and always. Amen.
make it? We made it. I'm going to take it.